<laughs> Hi everyone, Nuth in New York Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Your Old Droog record, PAX. New York lyricist extraordinaire and producer too, Your Old Droog, he's back with a new album. Following up a self-titled album back in 2014 that in my opinion did not quite live up to the height of his breakthrough EP that had a lot of people thinking that that Your Old Droog was in fact Nas in disguise releasing music under some kind of obscure pseudonym. Since then Droog has stepped out of the shadows and built a following of his own and released some pretty nice EPs, uh, my favorite of which was the Kinnison EP which was from front to back packed with all of these really clever, funny, interesting rock references. Because in my opinion from what I've heard so far in Droog's catalog he's really at his best when he's got a a sharp topic, a concept that he can really pull apart and go in deep on. Do something conceptual, do something ambitious, which in my opinion is sort of what made his self-titled record a little lackluster because it felt a little like loose change, kind of like a, a, a compilation, a little unfocused, whereas I know his sound is the kind of sound that, that would go over much better with listeners if it was laser focused into a well-groomed project, which is pretty much exactly what Pat is. Track after track after track on this thing, Droog comes through with song concepts, ideas, topics, delivered in his deep, smoky, New York asphalt voice. The entire album kicks off with a story on the track uh, GKAC, or Gotta Kill a Cop, which despite the title doesn't really carry much in the way of a political message, it's not really a statement or anything like that, it's really just a tale that seems to feature a protagonist who is high on drugs and crazy with paranoia, and then he makes this rash decision to shoot some police officers. And then he just kind of goes out in a blaze of unjustified glory. It's a weird story. There's kind of an anti-cop tone to it, but what Droog says about the protagonist in this track gives the audience really no reason to sympathize with his shitty decisions here. He's clearly in the wrong, but I guess in a way the track is just kind of like a commentless depiction of some kind of crazed psycho who he says in the track practiced or target practiced on base heads and stray cats. What's weird is with police brutality being such a hot button topic right now, your old Droog somehow writes a protagonist who kills cops but his motivations make him more unlikable than the cops he's killing. But, uh, but what, whatever. On the song, I only drew raps about his reputation as a perfectionist, saying that he only goes all in when he knows he has his ducks in a row, he has his verses well written, all those double entendres and homonyms are perfected, and he has an Apple Store genius bar line on here that I, I think he got from our friend Cal Chuchesta over there. We get some cautionary tales from Droog on the song You Can Do It, where he's rapping about some guy trying to become a rapper when in fact he learns later that maybe he shouldn't <laughs> try to be a rapper. Uh, some guy's deflated hoop dreams and a woman who I guess he knows or knew or maybe even made up just for the purpose of this story, I'm not entirely sure, who tries to sort of build a career or build a life for herself based simply on her looks and uh, I guess some plastic surgeries. And the song White Rapper's A Good Guest is a late but very necessary reply to the notorious statement that Lord Jamar made during that Vlad TV interview about white people, white rappers being a guest in the house of hip hop. And while Droog does address and acknowledge that fair point, ultimately he boils it down to talent, whether or not somebody should get invited through that doorway. And he does this over a very peppy, funky beat, over which he even pulls off a pretty solid sung hook with his husky ass voice. Droog throws in a couple decent feature tracks here, like Grandma Hips featuring Danny Brown, or uh, Bangladesh with Heems. Droog throws in a couple of decent feature tracks on this thing, like Bangladesh with Heems and uh, Grandma Hips with Danny Brown, which features this very kooky, swanky jazz sample. But I think the best chemistry on this album is exemplified on the track Help, featuring Wiki and Edon. The track kicks off with explosions and sporadic guitar licks in every direction. Droog does not take any uh, time on this track to sort of let the instrumental set the tone. He just jumps right into the track. And the song is just wall-to-wall -wall intensity, just like lyrical slaughter. Uh, it's like an action film with gun spray just going on in every direction. With a hilarious little interlude where uh, some vocal loops 
from Frank Zappa's track, Help, I'm a Rock, are thrown over that line uh, that Rob Bass rapped on uh, It Takes Two. Uh, I wanna rock right now! Though I love the beat on that track, the Achilles heel of this album really is the production, in my opinion. It's grimy and dusty and boomy and bappy to the point where it, it's just so stereotypically New York that it couldn't be from anywhere else. It runs a little generic at points, especially when you uh, put out a track on this album like Just an Interlude, which features a no flavor feature from one Mr. Chris Crack. Still though, there are a few exceptions like that beat on Help, love that instrumental. Also, Gotta Kill a Cop, which has these very crispy, bappy, just really just high definition drum beats. It's just such a good beat, it's such a good groove. And then that's topped with these weird deflated synth leads that just go with each bar. There's also a very unlikely beat on the track Winston Red, which is kind of this really odd, silly funk loop that I don't think most rappers would even attempt to try to spit on. And the song You Can Do It, while it's not uh, an especially refreshing or cutting edge beat, I do like the rich piano chords on this track and the gently driving bass lines. It's really cinematic and sets a good tone for the kind of thoughtful advice he's trying to pass over to the audience on this song. And I guess I also like that the beat on Bangladesh is seasoned with these really cool eastern woodwind melodies. But that does not make up for the fact that some instrumentals on this thing, uh, namely the track Rap Man, sound like an MF Doom leftover. Also kind of the case for the funny, somewhat autobiographical lyrics on the song where Droog fashions himself as a superhero for rap music. Although I do love the bars on this track about him having the work ethic of a Mexican, him having a studio tan, uh, I, I guess the opposite of a tan because in the studio I imagine you don't get much sun. And there are moments on this thing where he's clowning rappers who are, I guess people would probably call them mumble rappers, uh, saying that on the mic it doesn't even sound like they're speaking English, or other guys from New York who we've heard recently who are always rapping about their their third eye being open. While I do like some of that stuff, it, it, it is kind of a cliche at this point. Uh, although that does not, you know, again, make up for points like My Girl is a Boy, which while I do kind of like the angle he's trying to go with the story with here, uh, it still is an underwhelming track because the hook is kind of flaccid, the beat is kind of flaccid, and while Droog does try to take a little sensual on this track, I, I wouldn't say it's a, a, I, I guess, a, a, a vibe that's achieved. Still though, even though some of the beats on this thing are stale bread, uh, Droog's bars are still Buddha. Like uh, this one. Before I ever had FIFA 2K to play live, it was maddening. Had to survive. That that Madden reference is hilarious. Wagwan, Foghorn, Leghorn, come Halloween, I'm the wrong one to egg on. Four megaton limbs, harmonim with my homonyms. Far from PC, I'm VC with his arm in the rim. Made a vigil for the morn, you couldn't hold a candle to what I did on wax before even signing contracts. These are just a few examples, and of course there are many moments on this record where he's making uh, really interesting references to things like Typo Negative and Depeche Mode, Jazz, even Pokemon, and also Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World. <laughs> you know, this is a good album for Droog. It's certainly an improvement over his self-titled record, but I think it's still a tad inconsistent, or at least revealing that Droog still has a little ways to go when it comes to uh, building up some versatility in his repertoire, because despite the fact that he is a new artist, in, in some ways he seems like uh, very much an old soul who's sort of stuck in his ways. And while some of the criticisms he throws at his contemporaries are warranted, uh, I mean, some of their sounds are, are certainly fresher than what's delivered here. Especially with it sounding like Droog has swapped out a lot of the Nas influence on his previous projects for a very clear MF Doom influence. Still though, the tracks on this album where it seemed like he was trying something a little new and stepping outside of his comfort zone went over pretty well. I would love to hear that more in the future, and I admire that he tried and for the most part succeeded to put together an album that flows very well from front to back, which is aided by these really good Anthony Jeselnik skits where he's sort of playing this uh, radio DJ in between so many songs talking about, you know, random shit between tracks and adding in funny little jokes and subtle bits of music humor. One moment where he even references Death Grips. You know, this, this album's definitely for the old heads, but I think there are enough good things about it that uh, people who are you know, really looking for new, refreshing hip-hop will get some good things out of it, too, uh, because Droog does have raw, undeniable talent uh, that'll certainly have you kind of rewinding points of songs just to kind of catch again what he was trying to say with the lyric, because so 
some of the lyrics on this thing are that good. I'm feeling a decent to strong seven on this one. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't die. Just stay alive and watch more of my reviews every day so I make that sweet, sweet green. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Other videos next to my head that you should check out. Subscribe to the channel. Official website too is linked next to my head as well. I hope everybody is doing good. Uh, stay in good health and uh, forever.